another video in the app development program. Today we're going to be taking a look at iOS, the operating system that we're going to be building applications for, and kind of just doing a bit of an overview of what iOS is, where we currently are in its development as it's been a number of years since it was released, where it runs, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So right here, we are actually on apple.com, of course, um, specifically apple.com slash iOS. And we have a bunch of things on here that we're going to go through. But just a preface, of course, iOS is the operating system that runs on iPhones, iPads, um, and iPod touches, even though that isn't really per se one of their more popular devices now in 2019. So iOS has a underlying foundation of Linux, actually, and you don't really need to know the um, the foundations, like the nitty gritty of the internals, but I figured I'd mention that. Um, and the point of mentioning that is iOS is a full blown operating system. A lot of people think that mobile devices have this like uh, complex of baby software. And Steve Jobs, actually, back in 2007, when he was announcing the very first iPhone, um, something that he highlighted was the iPhone and respectively iOS is a remarkable machine. It's basically a full blown computer. It has a lot of the same fundamental components that macOS uses for your computer. And as a result, uh, you really have to consider things such as architecture, memory, designing a good user interface, things that look nice, things that are functional when making apps for the iPhone and iPad. Respectively, let's just get going with this page. So um, more power to you, of course, we have some Apple branding. So let's get started with this. So we currently have iOS 12 as the latest iOS version released to the public. However, iOS 13 and iPadOS are in beta. So iOS 13 brings a bunch of new things such as dark mode, um, a bunch of improvements, performance, speed, overall, but dark mode is really the headlining feature. Um, the iPad got this update to now be called iPadOS. So iOS apps will still run on the iPad. However, iPadOS offers a couple of cooler things now, such as the ability to pin um, notifications right on your home screen and do uh, a couple other things that are more desktop grade-esque. Um, and Apple's kind of push of making an iPad a replacement for a computer. So just so you're aware, this is where we currently are in the version numbers. So moving down, this is of course highlighting um, the speed and performance effort that Apple is focusing on uh, and making to make basically everything we do on an everyday basis faster and smoother. Um, of course, a couple, couple more highlights about that. They are showcasing their camera app, the messages app, um, multi-user FaceTime, and yeah. So another important thing to know is the devices that uh, more specifically than the iPhone and iPad that iOS supports. So iOS, of course, supports all of the different iPhones. So everything from the very first iPhone 2G to the 3G, 4G, 5, 6, 7, all the way here to the 10, um, which has uh, these notch notches. Um, it is important to understand, though, that as new iOS versions come out, Apple drops support for the older version, uh, version models, right? So the iPhone 4, obviously, Rather, I don't know if it's obvious, but the iPhone 4 does not get iOS 12, um, and Apple cites hardware constraints, which may or may not be may or may not be true. Um, however, from a business perspective, you know, uh, it makes sense for them to not support it. So when we're developing apps, we want to keep in mind uh, if we want to specify a minimum iOS version that not all devices and customers, uh, users will be able to download that application if their device is either not on that version or if that version isn't even supported on that device. So it's an important consideration to take. Um, of course, they need to show off their Animoji because it's definitely the number one feature on the iPhone, according to Apple. Other than that, of course, we have the iPad, which is, of course, these applications are built very similarly 
Uh, the UI for the iPad is optimized a little more to take advantage of the larger display. So moving on, we should be nearing the bottom of this page. Here we have an example of a game. Of course, the iPad and iPhone respectively have amazing graphics capabilities and um, tools and frameworks to create magnificent looking graphics, 3D, 2D, shadows, uh, basically uh, platform and console grade graphics. Of course, we have notifications. Of course, we have a variety of other things we can do, multimedia support, sending messages. And that's basically where I'm gonna cut this video off. Um, I think you have a fairly strong idea of what iOS is, otherwise you wouldn't be here in this course. And uh, I'm honestly really excited to get started on actually downloading and getting Xcode set up and getting our hands dirty in the code. So thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.